What's up friends? I'm going to shoot a quick video on how to build a thrust vector nozzle on the back of your thrust tube like the one I got here on this Eurofighter. As you can see your microcontrol servos they have like three holes in, in them so you can add multiple connector rods so what I did was I ran one connector rod back to my Elevon back here on the, on the right. Then I used the second notch to run another control rod back to the control horn on the, the thrust vector nozzle. And I'll show you how you get that 360 degree movement there. a lot of fun to fly these jets with this little system. So here I got a 30 millimeter fan shroud that I picked up and again we'll be using the little dollar store kids coloring book cover. This stuff is like as thick as like a, a Christmas card you get at CVS. It's not very thick, it's pretty thin stuff. But again I got this at the dollar store. So here we got our pieces all set up. Here's a nozzle I already built on the end of this thrust tube. I'm going to get you your measurements for this. Uh, your thrust tube itself will be different lengths of course for your different jets. But I put the EDF unit in there for the fan shroud. I'll wrap this around it. Taking foam safe glue glue it together and don't narrow it down at the back just make it one size from front to back you don't want to close it off at the back or narrow it down you just want to make it one straight thrust tube which once I did that it, it gave us our thrust tube now for the connector piece that connects your thrust vector nozzle onto your thrust tube. It's three quarters of an inch from back to front. Then the thrust vector nozzle itself, which we got here, is two and an eighth inches from back to front. So again, I went ahead and made my thrust vector tube. Then I made the connector piece. It fits on, slides right on over this one. You want to make it loose, give it some some play in there. Don't make it wrap around it tight. As you can see, you still got some movement already. And when you connect this on, I use some little one millimeter carbon fiber rod which I took and sharpened on a piece of sandpaper here took and sharpen the end but I'll use like this little poker stick here to punch my hole and when you slide this on you only want to go maybe two sixteenths of an inch you don't want it to go on there very far, just enough to get the carbon fiber rod through both pieces. Just like so. And punch your hole. Drive your carbon fiber rod through there. Run it out the other side. Make sure it's centered. That's going to give you your up and down movement. And for your thrust vector nozzle, this one's made to slide over the your connector piece. So right there you can already see how you're getting your your movement out of them. And again don't be afraid to make them a little bigger and leave, leave some play in there. So 
So again, your thrust vector nozzle is two and an eighth from back to front. Your connector, center connector piece is three quarters of an inch from back to front. And then your thrust tube itself is going to be whatever size you want it to be to fit your jet, however, whatever length you're going to be wanting it. Like on the X47 here, this thrust tube is fairly short. Here you can see I got the center piece and then the thrust vector nozzle on the back of it. So let's start with the one I already got built here. Just a mock-up I did for you guys. Now when you add on your center connector piece, you want the brake to move up and down. And once you do put your carbon fiber rod through there, you don't want to go back and cut out some like half moons on the top and bottom of your connector piece and your thrust tube. You see I got to cut out like a little half moon on the top and bottom. So that way you get more movement. Then I took and slide over the thrust vector nozzle over your center piece. I drove a piece of carbon fiber rod down through the top, out the bottom. And if you look down the tube there, you'll see them both in there. That'll give you your 360 degree movement. So make sure your brake for the center is just like what I got here. You want it for your up and down. And left and right. So once you have that, you go ahead and install these Dubro micro micro control horns. You want to center your control horns between your carbon fiber rod on your first brake and the carbon fiber rod that you put on the second brake going down through the top. You want to center it between them both. So I just took some CA glue, foam safe glue, stuck my control horns right there. And this is how it's going to be on your jet just like how it is on this one. You see we got up and down, left and right. And once you put your carbon fiber rod through, I just leave the carbon fiber rod hang out, stick a little foam safe glue on the end here. That way it joins it together and then just keep moving it around so that the two pieces don't end up stuck together. You just want the carbon fiber rod glued to this center connector piece. The same thing for your carbon fiber rod that goes from the top down to the bottom. It's, it's fairly simple to do. I figured I'd give you your measurements on what I use there. So there's my thrust tube. It's going to be whatever size you need to fit whatever jet you're building. And you got your three quarters of an inch, the two and the eighth for your thrust vector nozzle. Now when I make my thrust vector nozzle, just like on this one, my my thrust tube and the center piece, they're all straight. There's, it don't narrow down none. The only place I narrow it down is on my thrust vector nozzle at the back of it. So I'll take and make it big enough to slide over this piece, then I'll narrow it down at the back to pretty much the same diameter as the fan shroud. Maybe just slightly smaller. So that way you're starting off with your fan shroud that size in the front and then it narrows down at the back of your thrust vector nozzle. And again you can see how I got the movement there. And that's how it'll be installed on your jet.
guarantee if you guys build one of these for your micro jet you're gonna love it it's a lot of fun to fly so there you go your thrust vector tube your center connector piece slides over that one and your thrust vector nozzle you make it big enough to slide over that one again you can already see we got movement there and once you once you put your carbon fiber rod through the side and through the top down you can pull it back out and go ahead and cut out your half moon shapes that way you get a lot of movement and it ain't going to affect your airflow with this moving around at all or these openings As you can see there, there, you can't really see through those cracks at all. Just make sure for your up and down movement where it attaches to that you're, you're going from side to, to the other side at your first break. Then for left and right, you're going to use the carbon fiber rod coming down to the top, through the bottom, to get your left and right. Like I said, it's fairly simple. Then install your micro control horns between on the center of these two pieces of carbon fiber rod. So find your center point of those two. And the control horns are on your thrust vector nozzle. Alright, hopefully you guys can figure it out from this video. I don't know what else more I can do to show you fairly simple to do. I'm sure you will figure it out. But alright, I'll get back to you with a, a build video for the Eurofighter. Still got to do a build video on this one. And I had a friend ask me to do a video on this battery, how I I took and splayed it open and So instead of this two cell being so so wide, I just took and cut the plastic off, folded the battery open, and then put carbon fiber rod down the top and the bottom of the battery, and then wrapped it on both ends with clear tape, and then put blue some of this blue painters tape over the whole battery itself. And that way the battery stays cooler. There's less drag. Just all in all, I don't know why they don't just make the batteries like that to begin with. So it's just something new I learned. I'll do a, a whole video on just showing you how to do that. But alright guys, hope you enjoy the builds. And I'll be doing some more. I'll get back to you as over and out. What's up friends? I'm just going to shoot a quick video on how to build a thrust vector nozzle on the back of your thrust tube like the one I got here on this Eurofighter as you can see your micro control servos they have like three holes in in them so you can add multiple connector rods It's a lot of fun to fly these jets with this little system. So here I got a 30 millimeter fan shroud that I picked up. And again we'll be using the little dollar store kids coloring book cover. This stuff is like as thick as like a, a Christmas card you get at CVS. It's not very thick, it's pretty thick. But I put the EDF unit in there for the fan shroud. I'll wrap this around it, taking foam safe glue, glue it together, and don't narrow it down at the back, just make it one size from front to back. You don't want to close it off at the back or narrow it down, you just want to make it thin stuff. But again, I got this at the dollar store.
So here we got our pieces all set up. Here's a nozzle I already built on the end of this thrust tube. I'm going to get you your measurements for this. Uh, your thrust tube itself will be different lengths, of course, for your different jets. So what I did was I ran one connector rod back to my Elevon back here on the, on the right. Then I used a second notch to run another control rod back to the control horn on the, the thrust vector nozzle. And I'll show you how you get that 360 degree movement there.